future. Uh, Governor Dugard, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Thune, Senator Nelson, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. I'm Dennis Dugard, Governor of South Dakota, and my hope is today to offer a rural perspective on surface transportation infrastructure issues. To get right to my key points, federal transportation investment in South Dakota and other rural states benefits the whole nation, not just those rural states. Highways in rural western states enable truck movements between the West Coast and large cities in the Midwest and the East. We are the bridge between those locations. They benefit people and commerce at both ends of the journey and along the way. Rural highways and rail lines also enable agricultural products, energy, and natural resources like lumber to move from rural points of production to domestic markets and to the coasts and on to world markets. Without a well-connected transportation system, many of these goods could not be exported. Every year, my third point, rural highways enable tens of millions of visitors to reach Mount Rushmore in my state and national parks like Yellowstone. These tourism dollars are spent here in America boosting the economy. So there are plenty of great reasons for federal surface transportation investments, even in a state like South Dakota and other rural areas. Secondly, rural states have needs for surface transportation investment. If Congress passes surf surface transportation infrastructure legislation, any additional funds would be put to good use promptly in South Dakota and other states. Any additional funds would create jobs and economic growth and enhance safety. However, I want to be sure that a rural state like mine benefits from any new, pro uh, any new infrastructure law in a meaningful way. I expect that any new infrastructure bill will encourage private sector investment and transportation infrastructure. However, public-private partnerships needing sizable private returns are not a surface transportation solution for rural states. Even after supplementing project revenues with tax credit, our low traffic volumes in rural states do not generate sufficient income to attract investors. Rural states are sparsely populated, yet they have extensive road networks. So the per capita cost of paying off principal and interest is high in rural states. That deters borrowing, and for a good reason. In short, any surface transportation infrastructure initiative that Congress crafts must take into account funding challenges facing rural states. Rural states, as well as other states, need to benefit from the surface transportation portion of any infrastructure initiative. So the legislation can't be limited to P3s as a solution. In addition, any surface transportation initiative should emphasize formula funding. Using the FAST Act, formula-based distribution would ensure both rural and urban states participate substantially in a balanced surface transportation initiative. Now, strengthening the surface, or excuse me, strengthening the Highway Trust Fund is an important objective. The Highway Trust Fund and the programs it supports and maintains they, may, they may maintain and improve America's surface transportation infrastructure. But the Highway Trust Fund is in some jeopardy. Without legislation after 2020, the Trust Fund will not support even FAST Act highway and transit program levels. In other words, it won't be able to support existing program levels. It won't meet the growing needs of the economy either. So strengthening the Highway Trust Fund is worthy of consideration and action. Just a few more points. Today, states do not receive the benefits of the FAST Act due to the, part, due to the uh, part year continuing resolution. States receive less than the FY27 appropriated level, or excuse me, authorized levels. For some rail and truck safety programs, the part year appropriation law continues programs as they existed before the FAST Act reforms. Promptly passing legislation to fully fund the FAST Act would enhance infrastructure investment and transportation safety. Also, my prepared testimony and the map attached to it make clear that the draft multimodal freight network published by USDOT last year leaves rural states underserved. In addition, stakeholders from across the nation protested the proposed network. AASHTO called the highway component of that network insufficient, inadequate, and poorly connected. If, you, if USDOT won't make needed changes to that draft, I hope Congress will act to do so. 
I also encourage Congress to increase federal transportation program flexibility and simplify and expedite project delivery. We want each program dollar to deliver more benefits. In closing, just two points. First, federal investment in surface transportation infrastructure in rural states benefits the entire nation. Second, P3s will not be an effective approach to improving surface transportation infrastructure in those rural states. So any surface transportation infrastructure initiative must provide rural states meaningful funding from sources other than P3s so they can participate meaningfully in that initiative. Thank you very much.